Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. Today's show is all about being colorful. So it's full of color. <laughs> you got it. What are you creating? Well, today I'm doing a really cool mosaic. It's, I think it's one of your favorites. Um, it's out of a plate, so I'm going to show you how to cut a plate and put it together for a stepping stone. And Candace J is being colorful with polymer clay and foil. You are going to love the beads that she creates. And I am going to get creative with fabric. I'm going to show you how to create colorful flowers. So it's a cool, colorful show. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back. We think it's time that you add more color to your life. I think that's a really good idea. I did recently. I put color into my chocolate brown <laughs> living room that you're always complaining about. It's chocolate brown. Don't you feel better? I love it. I, I feel better <laughs> that you've added color to your life. I, you know, I, I love color, but and I never intended for my for my living room to be chocolate brown, but I just couldn't get around to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just didn't take the time to do it, and I, it makes me feel so much better. She comes in every day, and I've got candles going, oh I've got incense, gosh. I've got music, and it's, it's just so different. It's alive now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. our whole show today theme, in case you didn't know, is all about being colorful, full of color. Yeah. And, you know, there's a whole science behind color because each color has a different vibration, and that's why different colors make you feel different mm -hmm. ways. And it's so wonderful. I mean, you could tell how I love color. <laughs> I have my little angel here every every week. And so, from the clothes that we wear to how we surround ourselves in our home, look at this, I've got this whole thing going. Uh, it's really important to bring color into your life. Mm -hmm. Now, Heidi has certainly done that with her project today. I have, you know, um, I love to mosaic. So again, I, I love the color. I love picking out the tiles. I love the, the shapes. One of my friends had this particular um, plate, which I have never even seen this before. She found it at a garage sale and she gave it to me, which there was only like one plate and there was some bowls. And I put it on, I, I cut it out, I put it on, and all of a sudden, the way that it went together, it just was color explosion. So, so I'm going to so, show you. So the, the picture that you've been taking a look at is the inspiration for color today, but you only had one of those plates. So right. today's project is a little bit different variation on But you know color. what's really cool about it is that you don't have to like the bright colors because the, the other one is just kind of pastel color. So it's totally kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's Heidi's project. So for my mosaic stepping stone, I'm going to use a plate for around the edge. And I wanted to show you how I cut it uh, with a little bit more control. Now, of course, you could take and put it in a bag and you can smash it with a hammer and you're going to have all kinds of little shards. That's fine. But I like to use a um, wheeled tile nipper and this is the one I use. Now, a lot of times you'll see this one out there where it's just a nipper. I find that the wheeled one gives you a lot more control. So what I do, and be sure you wear like goggles so it doesn't um, get it, uh, bounce up into your face. And I just take my first cut and I just cut just on one side. Now if it won't cut, you need to get you need to kind of adjust your, your nippers. So here we go. It's just, it doesn't matter. They, and it always does it differently. Okay, so then I want to go around the edge. And then this white part here, because I want to put this around the edge of my uh, stepping stone, I like to cut that off. Okay. 
Now, I don't usually use this one too much. There's, there's certain projects I'll use this uh, bump. So I still want to use this white part. So again, I'm going to cut as close to that as I can. And then just spread them out. And again, let's move this. And again, just go in on another part. See again, putting it right there on the edge of where of the plate. And you just continue until you have the whole plate cut. Okay, I have my stepping stone. And I'm actually doing it on the bottom of my stepping stone. The stepping stone actually has like a indentation where it's a little raised on the other side. So this is the bottom of it. So when you pick out your stepping stone uh, at your hardware store or your home, um, like a Home Depot or Lowe's, make sure you check the bottom because sometimes they have like, they're poured with like funky little things on the bottom. And I like my, the bottom of it to be flat. So I lay it out the way that I want it all my cut pieces of my plate and this one I'm, cho I'm choosing to go around the outside edge with my plate and also I have put it on you can put it on like a piece of cardboard or I have foam core that way it's easier for you to to move it around because the stepping stone is heavy now all I'm going to do I'm going to use the Aline's, oops, <laughs> Aline's outdoor adhesive And it's a strong glue that'll hold my pieces on, and I can use th this stepping stone outside. So all I want to do is I want to put a little bit of glue where it's going to touch. And then place it down. And it's your choice on how far apart you want it. Remember that, that whatever you're seeing underneath here is where you're going to have the grout. Um, I don't like to see a lot of grout on some of mine. Some I like to a little bit more. This one I don't want too much grout to show, so I'm going to get it fairly close. Again, just where it's going to touch, just on the edge. We're just going to continue to glue until we get it all around the outside edge. So my whole outside edge is glued now and now I want to concentrate on the center. So I decided on this one, you know, I could just go through and just glue another layer, but I wanted to put a little bit more color in here. So I'm taking some of the colors that I have in here and I thought a line through here would be really fun. So I picked up some of my tiles. This is um, some stained glass. So what I wanted to show you is that a lot of times when you use stained glass and you use a thicker piece like a plate, you have it where the stained glass is very small and your piece is very thick. So I want to show you what I do to raise it up. It's a simple craft stick. Cut just a small piece of the craft stick that's going to fit underneath the piece that you're going to put on and you glue, put glue onto the, the bottom there, put your craft stick in, and then put your glass right over the top of it. 
and then you have it where it's almost even. And I don't mind having a little bit of um, where it's not even. I like it where it has a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to glue this. And also, there's a lot of tiles out there that have this um, texture on the bottom. A lot of people like to use that as their as the front. It's actually the bottom of the tile. If you use it, that's fine, except for just remember when you go to clean the grout off, you have a lot more cleanup work to do when you use it like this. So I put this as the bottom, put my glue on, put it in line here. And some of them don't. See, this one doesn't have just a nice, even... And remember, too, that, like I said, lay it out the way you want it first, because once you glue it, you can't change it. So, you, ha you know, wait. It, my daughter always says, lay it out the way you love it, because um, it's going to stay that way. And let's see. Let's use another piece. Let's see if I can get some more pink in there. Here, again, is another piece of um, the pink glass, stained glass. So I want to put a piece of the craft stick underneath. And then I'm going to put the, this on top of that craft stick. And a lot of times, too, when you do a stepping stone, if it's actually going to be a stepping stone, you need to think about it that you have your, your levels pretty even. Because you could even make it as garden art, and you could do like raised um, ceramic pieces on it. And uh, so you need to think about how you're going to use it. This one is going to be... Uh, fairly flat, so it can be used as a stepping stone. So let me finish filling in here, and then we'll show you how to grout. I've glued all my pieces on, and it only took them, oh, about an hour, hour and a half to dry. You want them where your pieces don't move, and then you can grout. Now, what you're going to need for, for grouting is you're going to need a bowl with water and a sponge, and it's just a soft uh, sponge, and some uh, cotton swabs, some paper towels, and I have my grout ready to mix. Now I always keep out a little bit because sometimes I will put too much water in it and so it, that allows me some to, to play with so that I can get it the perfect uh, texture. And just begin to mix it around. And this particular color that I picked today is called North Sea Green. I thought it would be a really fun color since today's color. So, you know, normally I probably would have, I might have grouted this one white, but I thought, oh, that's a little bit too dull. We need something that's going to brighten it up. So this is North Sea Green. It's kind of a turquoisey blue-green. Make sure that it's completely mixed to the bottom. I can see it's still a little dry there, so I'm going to put a little bit more in. And I like it kind of the, the consistency of like thick oatmeal or peanut butter. And just make sure it's completely mixed. And then I just start to put it on. Now remember that the pieces that you have cut the pieces so they are sharp. So be careful when you go to put it on. Don't just really rub it in. I just very carefully smooth it around. And you don't need it too, too thick. You just want to fill in all that empty space. All the empty uh, the pieces in between or the spaces in between. Also, I didn't put any pieces around the side. You can put pieces around the side. I usually, if I do, I only put like one row. But I, and I didn't do it on this particular one. I thought this would be just fun to just go right over the edge. And then I can just bring my can actually bring my um, grout over the edge. I'm 
take some of this extra and just go right along the edge. Because remember when you put this in as a stepping stone, it's going to, part of it goes into the dirt area anyway, so you don't need to go all the way down with grout or with um, the tiles. Now I think it's ready for me to wipe it off. I'm going to get off the excess off my hands. And in my clear water, you're going to squeeze out your sponge as much as you can. And then just very carefully wipe over. If I have excess left on my sponge, I put it onto the side of the container of grout. Go back over, wipe it off. And then I keep a clean sponge. And all I'm doing is just smoothing out the grout. I'm not taking a lot off. You don't want to take too much off because then it starts to, the different levels will show. You want that grout right up to all your pieces. Make sure that my grout is smooth and all my pieces are pretty much uncovered. And I want this nice film on it like so. Now what I'm going to do, I can take my gloves off. I am going to hair dry it and I, I usually do this in classes so that, so that everyone can take their pieces home. And the grout won't be completely dry when they take it home, but at least they can see what it looks like. After they've spent so much time working on it, they want to see what it looks like. So I want to do that for you. So let's just take a few minutes and I'll hair, um, put the hair dryer on it. Now you can see that everything is kind of a chalky, the, the grout kind of turned chalky and dry. That's what we want. Then you just take your paper towels. I kind of wrap my finger around and I just take each one and I completely uncover the pieces. And this is just a quick undoing. Your, your real cleanup will be tomorrow. You're going to let it dry overnight. But it's just, it's a quick undoing of the grout or uncovering the pieces. And when it um, gets all dirty, then you want to just change, move your finger someplace else. And don't go like this with it. You want to just take each piece individually to uncover. This is the fun that you can see what it looks like. Now those little beads that we put in for the for the words, I'm going to dip my um, Q-tip in water and I just go over them, clean them off. And you want to make sure you do that before tomorrow because that will be hard to get off those little beads before tomorrow. And then just let it dry and then in the morning what you can do is to spray it with like a Windex and clean up all that extra um, grout this on the pieces and it comes off just great. Now, when you're completely, the, nec the next day after the grout's dry, you want to seal it with a um, outdoor sealer, which you can get at your hardware store. It would be um, 
for sealing the grout and the stepping stone and that way it makes it uh, great for the outdoors and I usually put two or three coats if I'm going to put them outside letting it dry about oh maybe a couple days in between to make sure that it's going to stay all the time that I have it in my my garden now some of mine that I had in my garden I've had in my garden for like five years and they've never cracked so be sure that you take the the uh, precautions to uh, seal it really good so that your artwork will stand up in the weather As you know, I just bought seven new stepping stones. They're all plain, so now I'm inspired. Well, you've always been inspired by this one. This I one. love this mm -hmm. bright, colorful piece. Those are my colors. But you know, when you go to, like I said, the the pastels, this one is really cool too, because when I first put it out, it's like, oh, this is gonna be boring for the color show, but it really turned out great. I like it. Color is color is color. No matter it what, matter. it's color. Now, keep in mind that when you go to the, the craft stores and you buy those kits that say mosaic stepping stone, they're not really mosaic stepping stone. They're like embedded concrete stepping stone. Oh, okay. So explain the difference, what that well, means. Well, when you buy a kit, they usually have like a thing where you pour in your, you're going to pour in your cement that's in the kit and then you press the pieces into the cement. Well, I just have glued, you know, as you saw, just glued onto the stepping stone. Actually, this is less expensive than the kits because you're just using an old plate and you could do the whole thing with just plates and um, your stepping stones are only a couple dollars. I think I paid a dollar twenty nine yeah, for right. each of mine. So yeah. you take plates that you can get at garage sales, mm -hmm. at the thrift store mm -hmm. and break, break <laughs> things around your house. <laughs> and I swear it's the funniest thing. Once you start telling people that you're using plates, they start ending up at my door. <laughs> they have their broken plates that maybe China that people that their mother had that broken an earthquake or something like that. I have more people come to my door with broken plates and, and bold. It's the funniest it's thing. It's great. I love <laughs> that. Now you have also, you have filmed an almost daily for us. So you have a little bonus. Ooh, yeah. So be sure you uh, subscribe to the almost daily well, newsletter. Well, tell them what you're going to show how to oh. do. <laughs> the most asked question on any time you ever do mosaic is how do you seal it? How do you seal it? So I'm going to show you how you seal it. So you need to be sure and subscribe to Almost Daily so you can get that this week. So you have certainly helped everyone add color to their mm -hmm. life and to their garden. Right. Coming up next is our creative friend and colorful friend, Candace J. Now what she's doing today is she's taking polymer clay and foil and she's transforming them. Little There's little tiny pieces that, we'll wait until you see what she does, Very into cool. beads and to pendants. Hi, Candace. Hi. Hi, ladies. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my studio. Today, I'm gonna show you what I like to do with scrap clay. Hold on to your hats, because here we go. I've been cutting some tiles and beads today and I like to do them in two-sided craft foil on polymer clay. So I, I treated the clay on both sides with a lovely rainbow pattern crafting foil and when I get to the point where I don't really have room to cut out anymore I can still have some fun with it and come up with something cool. I'm just going to tear up what's left and this really does work best with double-sided crafting foil. Because when you mix them up, a lot of them will get turned over. And you just want these to be some random shapes. You want to be sure that you're not using any pieces that um, don't have any foil on them at all. So here are all my pieces. Oh, I have one left from the last batch. And I'm just going to squish them all together and then I'm going to press them together. Now 
Now you don't want this to be too flat and you want to go back and look to see if there are any parts that are just a little bit too much of the plain black clay and push a little more color into it. Oh, I just love the way this looks. It is so pretty. And if you wanted to, you could also add um, a small piece, maybe a contrasting piece. And that looks pretty cool, but for right now, I just want to show you how fabulous this looks by itself. Give it a little more push, and then I'm going to cut it out. And you can use any shape at all that you want. I just happen to love hearts. So you can see, my goodness, just so lovely. And it's fairly thick, so it's going to be strong. But you want to go back and make sure that it is pushed well together. And when you look at the back, that's actually very pretty too. Lots of color back there. And gosh, you could hand shape it if you wanted to. But I think I like that just the way it is. That's adorable. Now I'm going to add a hole because this is going to be a pendant. Yay! I love that. As long as you have clay left, don't stop cutting. Squish it together. Cut tiles or beads. Something this thick I can use as a bead. And it's lovely. And it also would make a lovely tile for a mosaic. As long as there's clay, keep cutting. Keep tearing and smushing. If you find pieces that don't have any color left on them, take them out. This has some very lovely pieces. And there you have a wonderful black bead with some really pretty accents. Fabulous! Pretty awesome! Love that burst of color! And I really like the finish on it, so I probably will not put a gloss sealer on it. But I'm going to put a black cord through there, a silky cord, and I'm going to wear it right here. I hope you enjoy playing with scraps. I hope that you're inspired to try something like it, and that if you do, I hope I get to see it. Email me, Candice at CoolToCraft.com, with your photos and stories anytime. Stay crafty, my friends. Back to you, Tiffany and Heidi. So once again, Candace is creating magic with polymer clay. And color. Those were fabulous. Isn't that a neat idea? I love how she takes all the little pieces and then she breaks them up again and keeps breaking them down after she's created a bead. You know, there's the leftovers. Uh -huh. and, isn't color, that neat? On color <laughs> and color and more color. You know what's so funny? It's like, I'm so wrapped up for today's show. It's like color just brings me so much energy. I'm, I can barely stay in my seat today. <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> so thanks, Candace. For my project today, wait, <laughs> she went into my fabric box. I was just going to admit to that. <laughs> Heidi has the greatest stash of colorful fabric, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do when it came time for today's show for colorful was to go. This is just a tiny little portion oh, of what you have. You don't even know. You didn't know that there's another shelf out in the garage that has no, fabric, did you? I had no idea. <laughs> wait, I need to go there. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> so what I'm doing for my project today is creating colorful flowers. The Aline's peel and stick sheets are great for this project. They're four and a quarter by five inches so I can cut them down to the size or shape that I need. You will need 
five or six layers of flowers. I have cut mine with a die cut machine. You can also hand cut these. And I like to use t-shirt material or the beautiful cotton quilt fabrics. Lots of great colors to choose from and patterns. The first step is to decide how you want to layer your fabric and your colors. And with this particular die cut, there are several different shapes. So you just layer those together. And I think my flower is going to be very full. I think there's probably nine different layers here. So once you've decided how you want to layer your flower, you're going to start working from the back up. I take my Aline's peel and stick sheet and just cut it to the size and shape that I want to hold all of my petals together. As you get down to your smaller petals, you may want to cut your pieces in half. The secret to releasing the liner paper on this is to just firmly flick the corner until that liner paper releases from the adhesive side. And you just press it right down onto the first petal. Now you need to press to fuse that peel and stick sheet onto your fabric. Give it a good press and start layering. Now be sure when you layer your petals that you offset them so that you have a beautiful fluffy flower when you have all of your layers glued together. Again, press firmly to fuse the Aline's peel and stick sheets to your fabric. The peel and stick sheets are no sew. They're permanent, they're washable, there's no ironing needed. These are just peel and stick. So now I'm coming down to my layers with my smaller petals. So I need to use the smaller pieces of peel and stick that I have cut so that I don't have excess glue. We're going to be putting several more layers together so it's not a problem at this layer, but if you get to the top you don't want excess glue. Also be sure that you don't stick your the petals down underneath, don't get them caught in the glue. Peel back that liner paper, stick it right in the center. Give it a good press to fuse that onto the fabric and add another layer. Again, each layer I am offsetting so that I have a very full flower. And we'll put one more petal right into the center. So there I have the beginning of a beautiful flower. Now this is really pretty just the way it is where it's flat, but I prefer if you take this and you roll it into a ball and you rub it and roll it on your hand so that it starts to really ruffle up that flower. Then the next step is to take each individual petal and give it a good press down into the center. You want to keep rolling each petal, each layer, into the center and pressing down. We're trying to press a lot of texture and wrinkles into this flower. And so it helps if you take every single layer Keep rolling it into a ball and pressing down. Take your time on this step. Don't rush it because you want that beautiful fluffy effect to all of your petals. And again, you don't have to worry about these coming apart because the Aline's Fabric Fusion Peel and Stick Sheets are very, very sticky. So I have my ball of fabric and I'm giving it one more press and then we let it open. Look at those beautiful layers of color. Once you get down to the center, it's time to add your beads to the center of your flower. For that step, I like to use the Aline's Fabric Fusion Liquid Glue. 
Now this is permanent, it is dry cleanable. And the reason I like to use this is that I really want it to come around and cup into the beads that I'm going to put in the center. The little seed beads are a little bit more difficult to hold, so I want to be sure that I have plenty of glue to do that. So I'm just going to sprinkle my seed beads into that glue, give them a good press, and then any of the excess beads you just want to shake off into a container. You are going to want to be sure to let these seed beads dry overnight and then this piece would be washable after 48 hours so it's really cool to create these flowers to put on your wearables. Another project that I love to use these on are the felt pouches that I create. Now I have put a video up at Almost Dailies where I show you how to actually assemble these felt pouches. So be sure and check out the video tutorial at Almost Dailies. This is cool. You can see how I would just glue this flower right on top. You can use a ribbon to tie it closed and or you can use a hook and loop tacky tape for that also. So if you like to bring a lot of color to your creativity you will want to make dozens of these beautiful and colorful floral flowers. What's so great about creating the flowers from fabrics is that you can use them in so many projects. Yes, well you, you wouldn't even have to stay with fabrics, you could do the scrapbooking paper is beautiful too. Yes you can, but because I wanted to use Myelene's Fabric Fusion, then I knew I needed to go to Heidi's Fabric Stash. Okay, but we also could use like tacky dots and things like that. Yes so you can. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm it, thinking it color, goes, color going It color. goes on and on and on <laughs> and on. And in Almost Dailies, I'm going to show you how to create the felt pouch. So you can put flowers on your felt pouch. Oh, that is cool. It was so popular. You know, I recently went to the Southern Women Show, and it was amazing to see the people in line to create those pouches and flowers. Yeah, so, I love that pouch, too. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super cool. And with the embossed felts, it's really, really great. So, my goodness, are we all colorful now? We are. <laughs> Let's stay colorful. So, what we're going to do is just a quick wrap-up for you, and we're going to swing back around to Colorful Heidi. Okay. <laughs> I did a uh, real stepping stone with the um, plates, uh, mosaic plates and tiles and uh, little pieces of glass, flat marbles, letters, anything you have around the house you actually can make into a stepping stone. Uh, look for at your garage sales at thrift shops for these fun color plates or you know whatever whatever color. I think they all look great together in the garden. Um, they make really great uh, garden art or stepping stones in the garden. Lots of fun. Did you notice the emphasis on the word real? Real? It's really yes. important to you. It's a real uh, mosaic. <laughs> right. Because a lot of people are intimidated by a mosaic. Mm -hmm. You make it so easy. You've explained how you cut the pieces, which mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, before I learned how you did mm -hmm. it, you just put it in a bag and use the mm -hmm. hammer. And then, how do I glue it down? How do I grout it? How do I mix the grout? How do I seal it? Oh, that's it almost daily. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny that it is such an intimidating art when it's it's just so easy. That's what I love about it. I love I love the gratification that you get after you do it and you and it it never comes together until you grout it. Trust me. And here's the thing I learned when I was back with my sister Candace at her mosaic studio. Anyone can do this mm -hmm. because you don't have to be an artist to draw a design. You just let the plates and the marbles and the, the beads and the alphabet letters do all the work for you. And don't think too hard on it too. I've had people mm -hmm. that just think really, really hard on it. You don't. It's so easy. Just put them down, glue them. It always works. It always works. It's, it's one of those foolproof arts or crafts that there is around. It's, it's unbelievable that it is, but it's you always get great results. Can you tell how much we love Mosaic? It's like, na -na 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 -na. we have to share everything with you. But it is, it's awesome. Everybody needs to do it. And if you live close to Los Osos, you can come and actually Mosaic with Heidi in her studio. Yes, you can. open studio time. Mm -hmm. Candace J, I want to uh, go back and show everyone what Candace made today. I love, love, love her project. Taking polymer clay and the rainbow foil 
she actually stamped out the cookie cutter designs first and then took little pieces and put them all back together to create pendant and beads and it's a great use for the leftovers from your polymer clay projects. Mm -hmm. She's really good about using leftovers in her, in her projects. That's really cool. She is. And, and the colors, oh yummy. Right. And, and the secret to making this work is putting that foil on both sides of that polymer clay. So she inspires me to want to get back, back into, into my clay. polymer clay. <laughs> I love polymer clay. Mm -hmm. I made the aromatherapy necklaces mm -hmm. And then I got busy on other projects like my Cool the Cast, and it's time for me to get back into mm -hmm. polymer clay. And for my project today, I transformed Heidi's fabric. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. I transformed Heidi's fabric into colorful flowers. You can use these flowers on all sorts of projects. You can go to Almost Dailies, and I'm going to show you how to actually create the pouch, the felt pouch that I put the colorful flowers onto. It's very cool, and it's colorful. So I do want to invite all of our viewers who have not yet liked us, because we're likable, <laughs> to go to um, facebook.com slash cool to craft and like us so that you can find out what is going on every day at cool to craft. Even if the like button's moved on, on Facebook. <laughs> Did it move? They I move everything else. I think it's I think it's still in the same spot. Uh, so mm -hmm. well, you know, that was the big deal before when they changed it from friending you to liking you yeah. and that was the big um, brouhaha over that well now gosh how many other changes have they made over the years but I think you can still like us <laughs> and don't forget to sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already done that go to cooltocraft.com and uh, sign up for our newsletter because it comes out on Tuesdays right after our Monday show and a different one comes out on Fridays it's got so many ideas in it that um, it's just mind-boggling how many ideas we actually have on coldcraft.com. Right. And have you so, ever counted them? Uh, no, but I know we have over 400 videos on our YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, Did you 400 know that? videos. Did you know I that? Know. I That's, didn't even know that. We, oh my gosh, are you tired now from all that work you've been doing? <laughs> we have a lot of ideas no to share. I'm so tired. We have a lot of ideas to share. We are not done yet. Yeah. So that was... Um, it's great to go back and count everything that we've done, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is cool. I, I think it's really cool to have all that um, accessible so that everybody can mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. So then tell us about Almost Dailies because okay. you are just pushing, pushing, pushing for Almost Dailies. Heidi, do you have an Almost Daily? <laughs> Heidi, what do you have for Almost Daily? Well, I realized <laughs> it wasn't enough for me. Videos weren't mm -hmm. enough. The newsletter wasn't enough. Cooltocraft.com wasn't enough. Facebook wasn't enough. Twitter wasn't enough. We had more to share. <laughs> so I had to create some way to share more behind the scenes because uh, it gets quite hilarious here behind the scenes. And you have so, no idea. <laughs> and so what I created was almost dailies. What is she doing? What is she doing? Um, yeah, let's see, I, I lost track. Oh, I created almost dailies. <laughs> so that we could share more ideas, more behind the scenes. If we only have five to seven minutes to show you a project, sometimes there's one more step that we want to add to that. So we have a, a sign up, an opt-in newsletter that's called Almost Dailies because it doesn't come out every day <laughs> because I can't get her to work that hard. So as we mentioned in today's show, for instance, in Almost Dailies this week, Heidi is going to show how to put the grout sealer mm -hmm. in. Right. And then I have a little video clip on how to put together my felt tote for my colorful flowers. Sometimes we just do it because we forgot to tell you in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie! So it, it was a it was a happy oops. Yeah. So We're that's what happy. Almost Daily is all about. And then behind the scenes, you know, I've been traveling to the Southern Women shows lately. Mm -hmm. Mama Aline comes over and crafts with us. We have visitors in the studio. So that's when you're going to see what's going on behind the scenes at mm -hmm. Almost Dailies. And don't forget that on, um, there's also a marketplace at shopcool2craft.com. We do have things for sale. We do because we like to raise money for donorschoose.org. <laughs> you know, they take that money and they support our classrooms across the USA because a lot of the teachers can't afford, they are having to put out their own money. Mm -hmm. So we decided to take a lot of the projects, not this one, but I'm going to touch this <laughs> one, a lot, a lot of the projects that, mm -hmm. that we make and mm -hmm. put them for sale at donorschoose.org so that 100% of the net proceeds go to support those classrooms. And also we, all, we, we find that sometimes you can't find some of the things that we show on um, in your local craft shop, so we'll put it on. on we have supplies shop, yeah, shop for cool to craft. sale. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we covered everything. I think we do. What a cool color. 
I, it, it's very colorful and like I said, color just energizes me. Mm -hmm. I used to be a color therapist and it's magic what color can do for you. So I'm just like, I'm so excited <laughs> and so delighted that we could bring you our colorful world and we hope that you add color to your lives. So be colorful, uh, get creative, get inspired, be, be cool. cool. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>